Hello everyone. Uh, this is Rakibul Hussain, software engineer at AppScore. So uh, in one of our previous webinar, uh, we have showed you how to backup and restore using WALG. And since then, our project has been uh, modified and we are introducing some of the uh, CRDs. And today we're going to introduce you to the, to the PostgreSQL archiver for backup and point in time recovery of PostgreSQL database. So let's see the table of contents, uh, what are we going to see today? So at first we're going to see what is uh, Postgres Archiver and then how we can back up using Postgres Archiver. And then we're going to restore, uh, we're going to see how to restore uh, uh, using Postgres Archiver. And then we're going to see a demo for backup and restore uh, PostgreSQL database. And then there is an Q and A Q&A session. So, so Postgres Archiver is a custom resource for PostgreSQL database, uh, which is managed by QTV. Uh, it is used for backup and point in time recovery of PostgreSQL database, which is basically takes the snapshot periodically for full backup and take the continuous wall backup in real time using WALG. So currently only uh, PostgreSQL clustering is supported. So uh, let's see the uh, Postgres archive CR first, and then we're going to see the rest of it. So, uh, so as you can see, uh, this is a manifest of Postgres archive one, and here is the name of the Postgres archive one, as Postgres uh, archive sample in the demo namespace. And here in the spec section, uh, we have a pause uh, which enables the archiving, uh, like for backup. If it's true, it means uh, you need to pause the backup, uh, the full backup and the continuous backup. So as you can see, we have specified it as pause, which means the backup is enabled. And here in the database section, uh, we are specifying which database uh, we are allowing to use this archiver. Uh, as you can see, we are specifying the namespace same, which means uh, it will only allow the demo namespace and with the selector level with archive and true. And here uh, we are defining a retention policy for backup job, which will be created by, a, by, a, by another CI backup configuration. We are going to see it later. So for this backup job, we are uh, creating a real retention policy, post-case retention policy, which is also in the demo namespace. And I'm going to show you the retention policy. Here we are specifying some of the configuration for the retention policy, like uh, how to store the snapshot, how many uh, snapshot will be stored hourly, daily, or uh, monthly, and how many failed snapshot will be stored. So this is the uh, retention policy for job. And in the full backup section, we are specifying the driver, CSI snapshotter. Uh, and in the CSI snapshotter, we are specifying a volume snapshot class name, uh, long haul snapshot BSC, which I have created. And like, as you can see, there is a volume snapshot class, long haul snapshot BSC. And the deletion policy is delete and parameter type is snap. So, so uh, in this in the in the schedule uh, section, we are scheduling to do a full backup for every ten minutes. And in the backup storage, uh, this is also another CR which also managed by QStash. And we are specifying the name of the object is Linux you know, storage, uh, which is store the information of storage and the secrets. And if I'm going to show you the backup storage manifest, as you can see, the name of the storage is Linode storage. And here is some of the information for the uh, S3 storage. As you can see, the bucket name and the endpoint, the region, and the prefix, the folder name. And the storage secret, uh, where we are specifying uh, some of the uh, XS key. And if I'm going to show you the secrets, as you can see in the secret section, uh, we are, uh, the name of the secret is storage. And here we are giving the access key ID and the secret access key and the IW's endpoint here. So, 
So here uh, uh, in the user's policy, we are allowing the new space from all. And here is some of the deletion policy wipe out. So this background storage we are referring in the Postgres archiver here. So this is the sample Postgres archiver manifest. So let's see how we can back up using this Postgres archiver. So, so to do a backup, uh, user first create a PostgreSQL database referring uh, the Postgres archiver. And the provisioner watches for the PostgreSQL. When, when you find a PostgreSQL database, it will eventually create a stateful set and PVC. And when we find the Postgres archiver, it will create a site key. This is also another CR managed by App Score. And the backup configuration I have mentioned earlier. Uh, this backup configuration managed by QV stash. So this sidekick uh, will continuously back up the wall to the uh, cloud storage. So every time it found a wall, it will push to the uh, cloud storage using VALG. And the backup configuration create a backup session for every uh, period we have specified, like we have specified in the manifest 10 minutes. For every 10 minutes, it will create a backup session, which will eventually create a job uh, to uh, create the volume snapshot of, of the full backup and it will push it to the cloud storage. So this is the process of backup. So if I'm going to show you more details about the backup configuration and the sidekick, it's, uh, as I said, it's managed by the Q stash. It backup manifests and it also takes the volume snapshots. And the sidekick, the sidekick is managed by the app score and it used to run, side, run sidecars as individual port, but acts as a sidecar and takes the real-time backup of all using Valji. So, so let's see if we can back up uh, the Postgres database. Uh, so let's see the demo. But before that, I'm going to show you, sorry. Um, I'm going to show you some of the installation process. Like uh, you can install kubedb using this uh, Helm command and, and you can uh, install the volume snapshot or controller using this uh, YAML. And if you go to, if you want to in install the storage class long mode, you, know, you can uh, use it. Uh, this, you, uh, you can install it using this film con. I've already installed all of this. And you can go for the session of shorter to this repository. Uh, so let's see if we can back up uh, our. Uh, Postgres, uh, data, Postgres database. So let's see the manifest first, then we're going to create the Postgres database. So, so for the for, for backup, we need to, uh, we need a manifest for Postgres server. As you can see, the name of the Postgres server is demo PG, which will be running in the demo namespace. And here we are specifying the version 13.6 bullseye, and the replica will be three. And uh, here's the standby mode hot and the storage type durable. And in the storage section, we are specifying the storage class name long pond. And here in the access mode, uh, there's read, read write ones and here is the storage request. And here in the archiver section, we are referring the Postgres archiver uh, we have created earlier. Uh, I've already applied the archiver. Uh, you can uh, uh, apply it vice versa like if you apply the tv first and then uh, you apply the archiver so uh, i have already applied the archiver so i am specifying the archiver here the postgres archiver sample in the demo name space and there is the termination policy wipe out so uh, let's uh, take the backup of our postgres database So at first, I'm going to apply the backup storage. So our backup storage has been created, uh, which will eventually create a backup repository to control the snapshot. So let's get the post this. As you can see, our demo PG 
is in the provisioning state and our demo PJ is uh the ports are coming up. So we will wait until the demo uh, until the demo PJ is in the ready state. As you can see, our second port is also coming, and our sidekick has been uh, generated with its port, and it will eventually take uh, the wall backup continuously when it, when all the ports are coming up. So let's wait until it's get ready and we can do some operation and see how these backups work. So let's wait until it's get ready and we'll eventually see the, our cloud storage and what is uh, what is the position uh, it will basically store some of the initial walls on this uh from this database server and as you can see our postgres is in the ready state so let's check the cloud storage so that so if i'm going to show there is a folder as you can see there is a folder name backup has been created and here we have a, a folder name wall 005 which will eventually store the wall here as you can see there is some of the initial walls we have four walls here so let's try to insert something and switch wall to see if the continuous wall backup is uh, uh, working well or not and so at first we're going to extend into one of the four. So at first we're going to see our PJ one, which store the ones. I mean Ellis. So as you can see. Uh, we have four walls and the current wall is five, current wall is five. And let's log in into the server in the database and test. So our test has been tested, it has been created, and let's switch into the database and create a table. Something like table one. Uh, so we have created our table. And so let's try to insert something. So into the Table one and this generate some series of data. I'm oh, sorry, um, uh, I'm mistaken. Uh, so our data has been inserted. If I'm going to count the data. Um, table one. As you can see we have thousands of data, and let's try to switch the wall and see if it will if it will push to the bucket storage. So I'm going to switch. Possibly switch the wall, or it is going to switch one.
So our wall has been switched and we see, uh, let's refresh it. As you can see, our fifth wall file has been uh, pushed to the back storage, which means our continuous backup uh, is successful and it's been running. So, uh, so as I have uh, as as I have specified our uh, full backup schedule in fourteen minutes, so uh, it will uh, generate the backup uh, backup session for uh, in every ten minutes. So in the meantime, uh, we're going to see the backup configuration here, so that we can have more details about it. So let's get the backup configuration. So as you can see, as you can see, uh, the there is a backup configuration named demo pg backup config in the demo name space. And here in the backend section, uh, we are giving the storage uh, backend name storage. There is the retention policy uh, we have uh, referring in the process archiver. And here in the storage ref, you know, storage the backup storage we have created earlier and in in the station in the in the station uh, for backup station we are specifying some we are specifying an add-on and here in the repository uh, as you can see we are referring the repository demo pg repository and in the scheduler section uh, we are specifying to uh, uh, schedule a backup session for in in every 10 minutes and here is the target where we are specifying the Postgres server, as you can see the demo PG Postgres. And in the in the status section, uh, as you can see, uh, the backends has been found, like the storage and the backup storage. And the phase is ready. So eventually it will create a backup session in two minutes, I hope. So in the meantime, we can insert some of inside more data. So we have inserted uh, another thousand data. So let's see how there is the thousand data. So let's wait. The wait for the backup station. And also, I can show you the subject here. So, and the sidekick, uh, as you can see, we are giving some of the primary DNS name. This, this is actually for the this for the ENB for the containers. Uh, for the sidekick board, uh, some of the ENVs here, we are going to some giving some of the secrets and images. And uh, as you can see, the base is cut in and the board is running. So, So there is a demo PG repository which is created by the backup storage and the base is ready. And as you can see, uh, our backup session has been uh, triggered and it's been succeeded, which means our full backup has been generated successfully. So if I'm going to see the snapshot and the volume snapshot, as you can see, our snapshot is succeeded and it will be pushed to the Linode cloud storage. So if I going back to the Linode storage in the backup folder, as you can see, there is a folder created named snapshot. And in the snapshot, our repository backup snapshot, volume snapshot has been uploaded. So this is how uh, we're going to do a full backup and the continuous backup using the Postgres archive work. So, so let's see uh, how we can restore uh, Postgres database uh, using uh, Postgres Archiver. So let's go back to the slide. So 
So this is uh, so this is this is our structure for real store. And for to real store, uh, user first create a Postgres database uh, where he is specifying uh, whether he want to real store uh, uh, the database or not. So at first we're going to see the Postgres uh, manifest first. Then we're going to see the rest of the uh, rest of the architecture. So to real store, to real store, uh, as you can see. In the restore manifest, we are specifying a database name. Uh, the server name is the restore PG, which will be running in the demo name space. And in the specs section, uh, we are specifying the init, uh, uh, where we are specifying the archiver. And as you can see, we are specifying the recovery timestamp to upon to our time. And in the repository, as you can see, we're, uh, we are uh, referring to the repository as we can, as we have seen earlier, demo PG repository in the demo name space. And here is the Postgres version 13.6 bullseye, and the replica is three. And here's, uh, here's the standby mode, hot storage type durable, and some of the storage configuration here. Here's the storage request and the termination policy is quite power. So let's see the uh, rest of the architecture. So as the operator watches for the Postgres, uh, uh, Postgres CRD uh, and when you find uh, with the archive reference, uh, with, with the restore reference, and it will eventually create a PBC and it will take a snapshot before the recovery time stamp, the latest snapshot before the recovery time stamp, and it will create a PBC with that. And then it will generate a restore job, which will eventually restore wall to the PVC. Uh, uh, it will uh, restore wall from the snapshot time to the recovery time stamp, and uh, uh, it will uh, store it to the PVC. Uh, and when the restore job is successful, uh, the provisioner will create the stateful set services etc. and eventually. Uh, create the cluster using the PVC and prune, uh, prune the PVC for the for the rest for the rest of the PVCs. So, also uh, uh, the operator will create a restore session for secret config to, that will restore some of the secrets. Uh, this restore session also managed by cube stash. So let's, let's see more details about it. So as you can see, for the manifest restore, this restore uh, restore the manifest and it is managed by the cube DB, and it will wait until the uh, uh, wait until it's successful. So this manifest restore has not been applied yet, so it will be uh, applied uh, in our upcoming release. And as I as I've described uh, for the PVC and the wall restore, it will eventually create a probably a snapshot uh, with the closest to the which is closest to the recovery timestamp. And the first PVC is created using the volume snapshot. And then it will create a restore job which will restore the wall from the volume snapshot time to the recovery timestamp. And it will wait until the job to finish. And then eventually it will create the database cluster. So let's see if we can restore in our point of point in time. So for that, uh, uh, we need to uh, generate a register. So, so before that, before that, I'm going to drop the table. Uh, let's take a uh, timestamp here, as you can see, uh, we have this time now, and we will drop the data, we will drop the table here. Try to restore the database with the table. As you can see, our table has been dropped. Our table has been dropped, and let's switch the one. So uh, we have switched the one and let's take this time and try to restore at this point. So I'm going to edit this. And 
I'm not in this as uh, I've got time for a full end. And I have said the required time stamp at this point, it will require uh, without table. So let's apply this YAML. Yeah. So since it on this point, as you can see, our restore PG is in the provisioning state, which means our job has been created. And as you can see, our restore job spot has been in a pending stage. And when it will be completed, and when the job will be succeeded, our cluster will be started. So let's check on the job. You can see our job has not been completed yet in the running stage. When it will be completed, your job uh, will either fail or succeed. As you can see, our as you can see, our job has been completed. It will eventually trigger to cluster, and as you can see, one of our pod has been come. And uh, when uh, our restore PG will be in the ready state, we will check if we can successfully restore it to the pod, to the time to the time we have specified. So our pods are coming. Our second pods are coming. So when three of our, all of our ports have uh, has come up, uh, it will uh, get into the ready stage. Let's wait until the uh, restore PG is in the ready state. All of our ports have come up and it will be ready in a moment. So as you can see, our restore PG is already stored. So let's check if all of our data has been restored or not. So let's go into the Postgres database and as the list of the database. And as you can see, our test database has been restored. So let's switch to the this database. And then see if our table has been restored or not. As you can see, our table has been restored. And let's check uh, data in the table. So we have already found the data from table one. As you can see, all of our data, all of our 2000 data has been restored. If I'm going to remind you. Um, so there is the 2000 data. So in this way, we can restore, uh, we can do the point in time recovery for uh, PostgreSQL database using PostgreSQL Archiver. So, So this is from my end and thank you for joining. And if you have any questions regarding this uh, demo and uh, any suggestion, you can feel free to ask. So thank you.